story has been rated R <laughs> due to its mature themes, racial slurs, and off-key singing. <laughs> That's the nostalgic version of a trigger warning. When I arrive at my parents' country house in Texas, oh, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> I heave my heavy suitcase in through the front door. My mom greets me, not with a hug, but with a handful of papers, an official looking letter. Amy, I have something to tell you, she says. I crouch down to let my little black dachshund out of her carrier. Three hours on the plane, and Hazel's ready to sniff every baseboard and stain on the carpet. Mom hovers, her petite body casting a shadow so thick I can feel it on my shoulders. As I stand back up, she follows me down the hall, keeping time behind the suitcase wheels on the way to my bedroom. I don't react to my mom's dramatic welcoming at first. Her eyes ablaze, the letter shaking in the air. My mother's prone to overdramatizations. She once got so mad at me because I didn't agree with her that McDonald's should be eradicated from this earth <laughs> that she stormed into her bedroom and began packing her suitcase because she didn't want to be around this selfish family any longer. <laughs> she eventually stifled her anger, unpacked, and stayed, at least for the time being. She follows me into my room, and when I put the suitcase on the antique footlocker I use as a suitcase stand, she doesn't berate me for this act of furniture abasement, but instead stands in the threshold of the door. This letter, she says, the word seething from between her teeth. It claims I am his caregiver. I am not his caregiver. I will never be his caregiver. What are you talking about, I say. I have to pay attention now because she's got me cornered and I really don't know what she's referring to. This she shoves the pages into my hand. It's from the VA, and it says I'm his caregiver. They sent it to me. You have to tell them I will not take care of that man. <laughs> my mother speaks in all caps. <laughs> she even writes emails in all caps. <laughs> in fact, her emails are always all caps, nothing but caps. It's like she's yelling at us, and maybe she is. <laughs> she claims it's because she's blind, but she seems to be re able to read everyone else's emails. <laughs> she loves John Irving's novel, A Prayer for Owen Meany, where Owen speaks in all caps, so I suspect she got the idea from him. I take the letter and read. It's from the Veterans Administration where my dad gets all his medical care. He broke his arm playing a weekend game of baseball in the Army in 1952, so he gets free medical care since he was <laughs> wounded while in service. <laughs> the letter is addressed to my mom, and it does say, since you are his caregiver, the rest contains a survey they kindly request she complete so the social workers will know that mom's getting the care she needs as the patient's caregiver. My dad has been diagnosed with dementia. For the past 11 years, he has been going downhill and she has been able to ignore it until now. We all have been ignoring it until red flags became red flames. The letter asks if she ever feels overloaded or if the stress is affecting her health or if she finds herself unable to cope. Mom, I tell her, it's just a survey. They call me his caregiver. I am not going to take care of him. The VA just assumes this because you're his spouse, I point to the first line of the letter. <laughs> I will not, she spouts between locked teeth. Got it. She has an uncanny interpretation of the for richer or poorer in sickness and in health part of the wedding vows. <laughs> this I have known my whole life. Do something, she says. She's now half pleading. 
Maybe she's read my body language that is attempting to be neutral, but rarely is, as I usually want to either cry or open a cheap bottle of wine when she becomes a drama queen. <laughs> the crying is my inner child, afraid mom will leave me if I cannot detect what she wants. And the cheap wine is just my adult self avoiding the same feelings. <laughs> I'll fix it, I say, and this is what I will try to do. I always try to fix it. I will make it go away. I will appease her. I have always been who she called to complain about dad, even if it was just to say he ate too much, who she called when she was angry because he thought she was spending too much money, and I was who she called when she'd had it with my dad's disgusting manners, and she just didn't want to live like this anymore. <laughs> As a child... My goal in life was to make her happy, and most of the time I could, but it was a Sisyphean task. As much as I filled her up, that much more I would have to do. But the purpose for this visit with my parents is to take over my dad's finances since we discovered he's months behind in his bill paying, and the VA doctors just diagnosed him with mild cognitive disorder, better known as dementia. Mom now, now seems satisfied when I say I will fix it, that I will call the VA and make sure they know she is by no means going to give a damn about Dad. <laughs> she won't be responsible for anything having to do with taking care of her husband. We depart my room and head back to the front of the house where Hazel has found a new person to scratch her behind the ears. Dad's sitting at the kitchen table, reaching down between his legs to pet Hazel. He calls my little dachshund mix, little black Sambo. You're a little black girl, he tells her as Hazel licks his hand. Colored girl, he teases as she snaps at his fingers. You're a little Negro, he taunts, and she growls. He will go all the way. I hate that he says these things. These words, hateful words. It's Frank Zappa who taught me that words can't hurt me. They are said to provoke me, to get me riled, but only if I choose it. In the past, they would have. I would have argued and told him he was racist, and he would have smirked and let me rail, getting the reaction he wanted. Now I just stick my head in the fridge. <laughs> to ignore his words feels like condoning an evil. But to respond gives him exactly what he wants, and I won't give him what he wants. This man, he's the same man who when my mother did leave us once when I was 12, when she ran away as far as San Antonio, Texas from our home in Oklahoma. He and I drove together in the Oldsmobile to pick her up. Together, the two of us, my dad and me, riding down the Interstate 35, sang at the top of our lungs over the CB radio, Tanya Tucker's Delta Dawn, what's that flower you have on? Could it be a faded rose from days gone by? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the truckers responded to us the same way on their radios. <laughs> we also sang the Roto Rooter jingle to the same trucker acclaim. Call Roto Rooter, that's the name. Away go troubles down the drain. <laughs> but there's no roto-rooter to help with dementia. Dementia just gets worse. It never gets better. He will never be well again, and one day he will forget even me. He's 87 years old and just had his driver's taken away, driver's license taken away. It's like I've been put in prison, he says. He saunters off to know who knows where around the house, singing the classic Engelbert Humperdinck version of, please release me, let me go. <laughs> Mom can't drive either because of her self-diagnosis of complete blindness, yet she can read... <laughs> Yeah.
Yet she can read the letter from the VA that she wants to set fire to. So with my head stuck in the fridge, I realize no one's gone to the grocery store. <laughs> Dad, I say, trying to bring some peace to the house, why don't we go to the store and get something for dinner? Mom is pleased with this idea and goes straight to her little blue velvet chair where she can watch what she wants to watch on TV like any good blind person. in the car on the way to the grocery. Dad tells me about the immigrant problem they have in Texas. They swim the Rio Grande to get here, so we call them wetbacks, he explains, as if I don't know. We don't use that word, I tell him. What do you call them in California, he asks. People, I say. <laughs> I turn left towards town. <laughs> he looks out the passenger window, silent, until he begins to hum. Please release me, let me go. On the second day, I take him to a going away party for a friend where he volunteers. Someone mentions dementia. Are they making fun of me, he asks. No, Dad, I explain. They're too worried they have it. Later, we are all watching Goodwill Hunting. The party likes best is the blowjob joke. He keeps repeating the punchline, where with a mouthful of foaming beer, many driver garbles, that could be a kid. <laughs> I want to crawl in a hole, so I go back to my room. <laughs> a little while later, my mom sticks her head in the door. Dementia doesn't kill, she tells me. Alzheimer's does. He doesn't have Alzheimer's. <laughs> In her little raisin-hearted voice, I can hear how disappointed she is. <laughs> he got the wrong kind of dementia. related to these people. <laughs> By blood, my mother says. How she's disappointed that he may live forever. Dad's footsteps down the hall let us know he's coming to join us. Escaping to my room didn't work. They both followed me. I hear my dad singing, please release me, let me go. On the third day, while walking my dog, buzzards circle over the house. <laughs> it reminds me of helicopters that sometimes fly over my home in San Diego, announcing a missing elderly who has wandered off. <laughs> and I wonder if, accidentally, on purpose, the caregivers leave the doors unlocked. <laughs> Back at the house, I help Dad do his taxes. He can still add long sums in his head like he taught me to do as a kid, but he can't remember the first total to add to the second and then the third. And when he starts to get frustrated, I say, look, Dad, I have a calculator. And he says, good idea, with great relief. On the fourth day, it's time to say goodbye. When I hug my dad, he holds me so tight I can't move. I'm never going to let go, he says. When he finally does, he casts his eyes away so I won't see his tears. Don't leave me alone, he says. My mom is standing right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> to divert his face, he reaches down to my dog. Goodbye, little black girl, he says. On the way to the airport, I sit in the back seat of the car for hire. I have to stifle my tears so the driver won't know that I'm crying as the loop tape in my head starts. Please release me, let me go. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Amy Wallen.